All right, guys, moving along here with the Saturday Sportster, we're gonna go ahead and remove the front pulley to complete our uh, belt to chain conversion kit going on here. I've already uh, removed this and kind of bungee corded out of the way so I didn't have to take the, the, everything completely apart. Uh, it looks a little dirty under there, but hey, you know what? I can't see it from, more, uh, from my house. Uh, so first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna remove these two screws for the lock plate. Welcome to Saturday Sportster. Woo! Let's get going here. Now there is a tool for holding this still, but we got lucky there. Uh, you can also use a 3 8 impact. It's probably not a good idea to reuse these screws if you don't have to. Uh, if you do, make sure you clean them off real good. They should have Loctite on them from the factory. They should be Loctited and Loctited and the lock plate. Now, and don't worry about this corrosion. It's not gonna hurt anything. There's our lock plate and our two screws. In order to uh, loosen this nut, once again, there is a tool to lock this. Not everybody has that tool in their garage, so. We're gonna use this as what I use for Big Twin and Sportster. And it is an inch and seven eighths. And the reason it's so long is because on a Big Twin, the main shaft's sticking out there. But I'm gonna go ahead and use this uh, on there because that's what I use on both. And I'm just gonna use a half inch impact, a left hand thread. So not righty tighty, lefty loosey. It's the other way around. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and put that on there and we're gonna hold this. Oh, boy, that came off super easy. That probably won't happen in your garage, but hey, you never know. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this. Oh, that came off super easy, too. There's the corrosion we got going on there. And then here is the sprocket from the kit, belt to chain. You'll notice it'd be pretty darn difficult to put that lock plate on that side of it, don't you think? So which way do you think it goes on there? Obviously this way, because this side is flat for this lock plate. Now, so we're gonna go ahead. You may take a little look here at your seal. If you see any oil coming out here, then it's probably a good idea to replace this seal. If you are going to replace that seal for any reason, when you pull this spacer out, oil will start to pour out because it's higher than the spacer. So incidentally, if you're going to replace that, drain your transmission primary before removing this space. This spacer will just slide out and then you'll use a seal puller on that. You'll drive the new seal in. Everything looks dry and tidy there. I can't see any reason in the world to change that seal. We don't need to, it's dry. So then we'll just go ahead and put our sprocket on like so and that little lip on the backside once again goes up against that spacer and that's what's going to align our sprockets front to rear so that our chain is in alignment. Now, uh, we're not gonna use those parts there. We have this part on the website. It's called a mega nut. And this is gonna take the place of the stock nut and it's gonna give you a lot more opportunities because you'll see when this nut gets torqued, once again, left hand thread, You'll see when this nut gets torqued, you have to line it up with a hole. Well, when you're using the stock one, you have to get these, this plate to line up with a hole by changing it to a different position. And sometimes you have to over torque the nut to do that. So this is a neat little product we have that gives you many more opportunities to uh, be sure that your holes are lined up. And it also comes with new screws. We are going to be putting some red Loctite on the new screws and we are going to be torquing this nut with a torque wrench. In order to torque it, we need some way to hold it. It's just going to spin around. If the transmission was in neutral, 
it would spin around. Oh my goodness gracious. It's in gear. Huh. Can't imagine how that happened. So uh, I don't suggest torquing it in gear. So probably the best plan of attack here will be to just snug this up and then we'll put our chain on and we can use the leverage of the chain being on with the back wheel on touching the ground to hopefully torque that nut. So let's go ahead and get our chain cut. Okay, I highly recommend that you use this fine diamond brand high quality chain that we have on our website if you're doing this conversion. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the less expensive chain. I'm just saying this is a made in the USA chain that will last a good long time to go along with all your made in USA components in our belt chain kit. Just order the diamond chain. Let's get her on there. Okay, we got the chain out of the box. We got the wheel off the ground just a little bit so we can rotate it to get it on there. I'm just gonna start it back here. You can do it any way you like. This is the way I like to do it. And then I'm just gonna roll it around here. And oh my goodness, we never put our bike in neutral. Let's try that. I think that's it. Oh yeah, that's neutral all right. So you're gonna pull your chain around the front and down along there, yada yada, and then you're gonna go, wow, that's way too long to go on this motorcycle. So next thing we're gonna have to do is, there really isn't any chain made that is the correct length for any motorcycle. And the reason being is because there's so many different choices on front and rear sprocket sizes. So just about every chain you purchase will need to be cut or broken to be the correct size. Well, in order to figure out where we need to break the link to put it back together with the master link, we've, you may notice I have run the axle as far forward in the swing arm as I possibly can. Now, in the course of doing this job, if you find out that you need to move it back a little bit, that's fine. But the point of moving the axle all the way forward is if let's just say you had the axle all the way back in the slot, you took your links out, you put your chain on. Well, then the second time you're, you go to adjust your chain, you're gonna be out of adjustment. You're not gonna have any place to go. So that's the reason to run the axle as far far forward as necessary. Now, don't be surprised if you have to loosen it and move it back a little to get your links lined up because it isn't a perfect world. I can see right now, we're going to, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of pull this a little tighter and then we're going to look and see which link we're going to remove. The other thing that you have to keep in mind and uh, we'll show you here is if you look at your chain, you'll see it is possible to remove the wrong link. So what you when you are removing one of these pins, and this is the tool I use for the job, we'll show you how that works in a sec here. If I remove this pin, I will end up with these two side plates and this piece will be gone. Well, guess what? That's not gonna be able to connect it back together. So you have to be sure that when you're removing the pin for your length, that you're ending up with taking it off with this so that you end up with this because then the master link will be able to go back on. So in other words, if you take off, see right now, you see how that one looks? That's what it should look like after you've removed a pin. If you remove this pin right here, you're gonna end up with those two side plates and guess what? Your master link's not gonna go back on. So pay attention because you really only get to uh, cut it once. If you do it wrong, then you may be a, a link too short and then you're out the price of a chain. We're gonna wrap the chain around the sprocket and we're gonna to try to get it to a point where we're, see how I'm kind of pulling it tight? And then we're gonna go, okay, it looks like if I remove that pin right there, we'll be able to put the master link in and don't be worried about it drooping down because when we pull the wheel backwards with the chain adjusters, it'll take up that slack. So this is the pin I'm gonna remove. Well, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just grab a Sharpie 
and I'll mark the pin. I know it's greasy, but that's okay. You're gonna mark it, the one you're removing, like so. That way, I like to pull the chain back towards me a little bit to be able to use the tool. You're not gonna do it like that up on the sprocket. So I've got that marked. We'll go ahead and pull the chain this way and we'll show you how this tool works. All right, the way this tool works is, you'll see there's a pin in the center and when you tighten that, the pin moves in and out. So in order to start it, you have to have this turned all the way down so that the pin is all the way inside there. Like so. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn this up and you're gonna put your chain in the middle here and then you're going to have the side plates resting against that. You're gonna snug it up and you're gonna use a wrench and you're gonna turn this and that pin coming through the middle is going to push one of the pins out of the chain. So let's grab a 5 8 wrench and get to chain breaking. Okay, so here's the one we marked right there. Just gonna put this in there like so. No, wait a minute, that's not the one. Okay, there's the one we marked. We'll put it in like so. And then you're just gonna Snug that up like so, see? And then there's a hole here. So then you're gonna start tightening this and you'll see the pin come out the other side when we do this. And I know it feels real hard at first, but I guarantee it's working. And then it gets easier as it goes through the side plate. And I just keep cranking until the darn thing falls out on the lift. And I know I'm all the way through. No reason to look and see where you're at. No point in that. You can feel it when, oh, there it is, I feel it. There it is. There's the pin. Then you're just gonna go ahead and loosen this. And this. And there you go, chain broken. Now, notice how we ended up with that. If you ended up with that, you cannot put the master link into that. It has to be looking like this. So let's go ahead and put our master link on and uh, see how we did. There's our master link. Comes with a link, a side plate, and a clip. On this particular brand of chain, you'll see in a sec here, we're going to press this side plate onto this link. Some less expensive chains, it will just slide on. This is like an extra added security in my book. If you have to press it on, there's less chance of it coming off. The clip is also retaining. We'll show you which, that has to be installed in a specific manner so that it's facing the direction of the drive with the closed end, not the opened end. So now we'll go ahead and Get our chain up on there and we'll put our master link in from the back side so that we can see the clip at a glance like as we're servicing our bike we're lubing our chain you know we're giving her a bath something like that then you can just always keep an eye on that so there's our link just slid in there and then you're going to have your side plate and it's not going over it. Oh, bummer. I think I'm gonna lose these gloves because it's a lot easier to work without them. Its chains are very greasy. Not that I'm afraid to get dirty, y'all. There is an actual tool for this job. I don't have one. We'll show you the alternate method. If you don't have the special tool for pulling this together, a quarter inch socket and a pair of channel locks will do the job. So what you're gonna do is you want this to go over the pin because as you squeeze it, actually we'll just get it started a little bit first because we should be able to get it on a little bit from the middle, but then we're gonna run into the pin. Okay, so that's started. Could be a little more on this side. That started pretty even. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put this 
over that because obviously you don't want to keep pushing on that. And then we're going to put this over the whole mess. Either way around, doesn't matter. And then we're going to give it a squeeze and you can see it going on. Then we're going to move to the other side because we're doing it evenly. Ah, there it goes on that side. Ah, there she goes on that side. And basically we want to get that link on there enough so that we can get our clip on. And I can see that it doesn't look like it's all the way yet. So, oh, there she goes. Look at that. So we'll give her one last squeeze on this one. Oh, hear that noise it just made? I think she's getting happy now. And there she is. Now you can see the groove for the clip. Oh, watch out for the cover. And you'll see when we turn it around, it'll be fine. And the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to put this safety clip on there. Once again, closed end faces direction of travel. Not this way, this way. What you're gonna do for that is you're gonna start it like so. And then we'll grab another different pair of pliers We'll try this pair of pliers and see how this works. This may or may not work okay for me. You don't know. Basically what you're doing is you're going to get one end of the plier over the end of the clip and the other end in the middle of that and give it a little whoop, and she goes right on. Making sure she is secured, not gonna come off. If your side plate that you put on with the pliers in the socket is not pushed on far enough, it won't allow that clip to fully seat in there, but you can plainly see that it is seated and it's correct. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna, let's go ahead and uh, pull the wheel back a little bit and just ten, put a little tension on the chain and then we'll go back to the front and we'll get that uh, nut torqued on the front sprocket. So I just tightened this up when we put the wheels on in case we had to move it off the lift to work on something else. So loosen that. And we're just gonna tighten it. The other thing we're gonna show you how to do is how to center your wheel in the swing arm here. Super simple, real easy. Oh, look at that. We did a real good job. See how it's only gone back a little bit and it's already tight? That's great. That means you're gonna get the most available use out of this chain. As the chain wears, it will eventually stretch. I'm just snugging this side up a little bit. And we'll get the nut tightened and then we'll show you how to make sure that your axle is straight in the swing arm and not this way or this way. Oh, geez, that silly cover's right in the darn way. Let's go ahead and get this done here. So that's just tensioned enough to uh, put some pressure on it. We'll go ahead and drop this down so that the wheel can't turn and see if that's gonna give us what we need to tighten this. Once again, left-hand threads to I believe the torque spec for this is 50 pounds. Always double check your workshop manual on stuff like this. Don't trust that guy in the YouTube video, just kidding. Uh, and then I believe it says turn it an additional 30 to 40 degrees in order to get your silly lock plate lined up for your screws. So we're gonna torque it to 50 and see where we're at. Okay, once again, left hand. Okay, see how it's turning the wheel, but we did achieve 50 foot pounds. Now what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to turn this an additional, to line that hole up. You can see the hole for the two screws with the Loctite is nowhere near where it needs to be. So that will give us the additional 30 to 40 degrees that they're talking about in the workshop manual for this plate. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, obviously the wheel is turning now. One of the ways that you can prevent the wheel from turning is to have a helper apply the brake. And the brake should be enough to hold it so you can go ahead and tighten it. Well, since I don't have a helper, we'll just go ahead and get this part done. But 
the essence of it is to go ahead and get it turned so you can line it up if you're using the mega nut or the lock plate, either one, that additional 30 to 40 degrees beyond 50 foot pounds. We went ahead and tightened it up a little bit further to get the holes lined up. Now we're gonna go ahead and use our new screws and once again with some red Loctite because this is what's keeping that nut tight. A little dab will do ya. And I like to use this for the initial and then we'll throw the ratchet on there when we get them all the way down to put the final whammy to it. Common sense tells me that's perfect. Don't want to break these off in the sprocket, that's not necessary. I believe there's probably a torque spec for those too. If you want to look it up in your book and do it, torque those, that's fine. I personally like doing it by feel because I could feel that those things are tight. I gave a little extra whammy and I didn't break anything. Okay, great. We are done underneath there. We can go ahead and put our grungy cover back on. For the last time, keeping with our chrome theme we've got us a chrome kit to put this cover on for the last time comes with a nut that goes there and two for here and the other ones that goes there Woo! let's get her on there that one gets an eye lock somehow i think that's there she goes And as discussed before, chrome fasteners. Oh, look at that. We got three different lengths. What's going on with that? I guess we're gonna have to guess. We can see that one doesn't go there because it's too long. I'm guessing the longest one's gonna go there. And see, this is why it's important to keep track of where your stuff, this cover's been off here for so darn long, but I'm judging how much is sticking out when I'm sticking them in the holes. And see, that one can't go there because it's not getting to the threads yet. So by process of elimination, I have determined that those lengths go in those holes. And that one's threading very nicely, no problem there. And that one's threading very nicely. No problem there. Okay. And then we've got a couple of for this. Oh, darn, darn, darn. Wasn't paying attention. We had some little washers to put under the other ones, but not a big deal. We haven't final tightened them. So I don't know what I was thinking there. No washers under those. We gotta have washers. So we're just gonna pop those back off and get our silly washers on there like we should have done the first time around. Not a big deal. Just can't believe I put three of those in there without noticing that. Okay. Now we'll continue on with these. I see they give you a washer in the in the kit and it's kind of large so I'm gonna go ahead and reuse the 
the uh, factory ones. I, I don't see any problem with either one of these. I think they're both perfectly fine. Click. Click. Okay. Put the final whammy to the other three and then grab us a three quarter inch wrench for the nut. fit on there? Nope. That one barely fits. We're just going to use the closed end until we can maybe get the ratchet end on there on this one. Not yet, it's just too darn fat. Interference with the brake pedal. That's a pretty shallow nut, so be careful there. Make sure the wrench is nice and square on it. And that's pretty good right there. Next up, we're gonna show you tensioning the chain and making sure your axle is orientated correctly in your swing arm. And that'll be it for the belt to chain. Not a big deal on a Sportster, pretty darn easy. Big twin, not so easy. We're gonna go ahead and tension the chain uh, technically, on a swing arm bike, you should be checking your chain with the rider weight on the bike because when the rider sits on the bike, if he's someone heavy, it's going to compress the shocks, which is going to move the swing arm, which is going to change the chain tension. Uh, for demonstration purposes, we're just going to show you a correct adjustment and we can always change it later once we get the rest of the motorcycle done. It's not a big deal. So, Let's show you, obviously turning these nuts on the back is pulling that loop, which is moving the axle backwards, which will make the chain tighter. We'll show you real quick, and then we'll show you how to make sure the axle's correct. Look at that chain. You can physically see it moving as I'm tightening the nut. Wow. Oh my gosh, that's way too tight. Look at her go. Look at that. Okay, that's a too loose now. So Okay, let's go ahead and we're going to put a little tension on it and you're always going to check it on the bottom run of the chain not on the top and the other thing worth mentioning if i were to jack the wheel back up again and spin the wheel there's probably going to be a tight spot and a loose spot so always check for the tight spot before adjusting your chain i know this is a lot of stuff just for a silly chain i like to see three eighths to five eighths of up and down movement when it's tight that looks pretty good right there See that hole in your swing arm? Did you ever wonder what the heck that hole was for? Say, why would they put a hole in my swing arm? Well, I'm gonna show you why it's there. That hole is to check axle alignment. Now, I know y'all don't have a crazy Allen wrench that's as long as this one in the same size. So what you can do is you can just go to your coat closet and get a coat hanger, put a 90 degree bend on it, Go to your toolbox, get a little baby zip tie. You're going to use that and you're going to stick it in the hole on the swing arm 
and then you're going to slide the zippy tie to the center of the axle. Huh. Okay, that's how far the axle is from that hole. Well, guess what? There's a hole on the other side of the swing arm to do the same thing. So by going from one side to the other, you can see if your axle is this way or this way in the swing arm because you want your axle to be straight. So we'll go ahead and we'll go to the other side and we'll give it a check here. And wow, <laughs> that doesn't usually happen, but guess what? It's exactly the same. Okay, so just to review that little very simple but a very important operation. Check it on this side. Don't move your zip tie, move to the other side. Okay, let's just say we got to the other side and you stuck it in the hole. We'll just pretend that we're on the other side and you found that it was, oh, it, that zip tie is not lined up with the center of that. Well, then you're going to need to move the axle forward to get it to line up. Let's say it was the other way. It was back of the hole when you got to the other side. That means you need to pull the axle back until that zip tie lines up exactly the same from side to side. And then we're pretty darn confident that our axle is straight across in the swing arm and everything's gonna track true and beautifully. And then we can go ahead and tighten our axle nut. Once again, refer to your workshop manual. I can't give you every torque spec in the book here. And it seems to me like the other side is a kind of, oh, there, she stopped spinning. If your other side spins, you can use two wrenches or a wrench in a socket. So we're gonna go ahead and torque our axle. And you wanna line up the flats on the nut with the hole on the axle. And honestly, you don't wanna over tighten this nut because it will crush the swing arm and squish it in. I've seen it on FLs quite a bit. At any rate, tighten your nut. If you got a cotter pin, put your cotter pin back in. If you got the nifty little colony kit, it comes with a newfangled one that I might need a pair of pliers. So this is the latest and greatest little clip here. That's how that works. And that will keep your nut from loosening when you're riding down the boulevard on your new belt chain conversion. Woo! All right, so now that we got all that stuff buttoned up, we'll go ahead and put our other foot peg on here. And once again, I want to give a big shout out to our friends over at Burley for hooking us up with these awesome MX style foot pegs. Look at that. Ain't going to lose no grip on that baby, are we? Now, oh my goodness gracious, it folds up that way. We're going to have to adjust her. We're also going to have to put our little wavy dealio washer in there so they don't go flopping up and down, going down the road. There's that. Get your bolt lined up. Get your lock nut on there. Fully adjustable foot pegs. Oh. Okay, we need a Allen wrench for that. I think it might be this one. I think I'm right. <clears throat> well, she turned a little, so it seems to me like we're going to have to start with it. Oh, geez, I got that really tight by hand, didn't I? All right, there we go. All set. MX foot pegs. Burley brand. Get some. <laughs>